but I'll, I'll, for the sake of just of the call, these waves that we've been riding and the emotions that have been coming in, the energies that are inviting us into an expansion, <laughs> the emotions that are taking us into discovering places within ourselves that haven't been touched in the way that they're asking to be touched now. And how we stand up for our sovereignty, for our humanity, from within ourselves first. And also what was predicted as to what was coming in and how we're rolling with that tide now and where it's taken us to. It's all that and so much more that's going to be covered on today's call. And it's just, again, a gift and an honor to Sandra have you on the call today. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so welcome, John. It is such such an honor to connect with you all the time and everyone too. And especially, you know, I was kind of, I was thinking about, we connected four years ago on a very potent night, let's say. Um, it was election night. And I was just kind of contemplating like the timing of you and I getting together and having like a powerful conversation, talking about the higher things that are unfolding. I was just like, wow, yeah, here it is, you know, four years later with John and everything that's going on. And, and, uh, and we, were, we were speaking earlier on the phone, just kind of reviewing, okay. So we, we were a little forewarned that this year was gonna be this amplification of the dismantling because the higher realms, the higher light, all the light workers and the way showers and everybody who was embodying was going to change everything because the amount of light that we were able to anchor through the collective grid systems and the human hearts and everything was going to change everything. And it was going to amplify the dismantling effects, systems, realities, patterns, magnetics, emotional structures, everything. And to have such a palpable physicalization of, uh, of that dismantling is uh, it's quite extraordinary, you know. So so a lot of us are just in observer mode, not disconnected from what's going on, but going interesting, interesting how this is really just so in your face and the external. So the physicalization of new earth realms was was on the charts for this year, and the revelation and the freedom codes and the resurrection codes and all this embodiment and everything, especially in the first half of the year. And it was like, we just came out of the gate at the beginning and just, boom, you know, everything is just so amplified and so accelerated. But the beautiful thing about what's happening now is these, these quantum effects, you know, there's these, all these different layers of things happening simultaneously and because of the embodiment phase where we get to feel our multidimensional aspects simultaneously in a much more palpable way, again, physicalization of what's happening upstairs, it's really quite beautiful and brilliant what is unfolding right now, not just with the external dismantling, but with the heightened energies that a lot of the embodiers are going through right now and the the ability to handle to integrate so many different realms and aspects of self at the same time that we feel this really strong creator state of consciousness coming back and that is this pure state pure connect reconnection to source not just as a reconnection but as a, a consistent awareness of um, uh, right within our beingness. Like I have never felt source or my higher levels or the, the physicalization of, um, of the pure, pure Christed state of consciousness or zero point has been so easy to get to. This has been con consistent for me. And like, I have not experienced it to this level before so much so that you spend many hours in the light realms each day and each night and and there's been um just the, the ability to again you know activate those crystalline structures taking on so much more light and so much more of these uh this higher consciousness and of course because of the current circumstances 
Uh, we have a lot of people praying for help and calling on it, which gives us permission to take on more of that that's coming from Gaia herself and and from the from the um, the new the brand new star organic stargate system that's been activated. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense, and and it's so much that you packed into those five minutes. Um, because there is a lot of shifts and I've been feeling also, I find myself, I went through a long period at the beginning of the sequestering um, where I had the energy and the drive and the passion to do, to do the shows, to do certain things that were very specific to how I'm showing up as a way shower, if you will. Um, and then after that, I found myself, I'd have to throw myself on the couch and it wasn't to sleep. It was to get into this alpha state of energy and it would run through me so beautifully and that's wonderful but then i also found myself in different periods of an amplified agitation like what wasn't resonant with that alpha state would have to come up to be felt to be experienced um, embodied and transmuted somehow and it can be confusing because it's we can't get into a knowing of how to control it to try to to try to get it to evolve. It feels like an organic process somehow. What's your awareness around that? My awareness of that is, uh, is the awareness of being like a crystal, like truly an amplifier of anything. And then we choose, you know, because everything's being amplified. So of course there's always a, a bit of collective transmutation, which technically is our own stuff, you know, but it's in, in that moment, like my, strongest tool through the because like you there's uh, it, it might be worse for me uh, I don't know the things that I've been going through I'm just like wow I mean there's been entire days where I could barely maintain waking consciousness me too for me longer too. than an hour mm -hmm. or so I'm just like well, all right I'm out mm -hmm. you know and and just needed upstairs I, I want to uh, sleep mass that says needed upstairs and i'm just gonna check out <laughs> like, all right lay down and all this stuff happens and then you come back into waking consciousness you're like that was my whole day you know? yeah. <laughs> and it's just it's like that but i'm very aware of the crystalline part of of this activation becoming more crystalline because when i step outside my you know my skin is sparkling and everything like that being an amplifier of the higher stuff, but there's also the the lower stuff kind of wriggles in and tries to open up new pathways in, in the body and tries to open up new meridians. That's why it's rewriting the body as well as the consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I'm aware that, yeah, we're going to need more rest. May, oh my gosh, we're getting ready for like a big, uh, a big activation for the embodiers, I should say. At the, at the beginning of June. And we were forewarned about it. So we've been like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's the end of April. I, you know, it, it's several hours a day in this quantum unified zero point state playing with the light realms. And, and it, just, it just takes over, which is quite beautiful. But the other kind of thing that wriggles in every once in a while of like that, you know, how much can I, can, more of this can I take? I always kind of check in with myself, how do I feel in this now moment? What exactly am I feeling? Is it mine? Is it the collective thing? Because the co collective thing too is so amplified. What am I creating in this now moment? Never going into panic or fear that's not on the menu any longer. It's just kind of like, what, what exactly am I experiencing right now? And how or what, what do I need to shift it? How do I shift it in this now moment? Going to highest trajectory, highest self-care, whatever it is, because sometimes it's a matter of the mind wanting, hey, your inbox is cray cray right now. You need to answer all, because there's all this newly awakened, you know, questions and what about this and what about that and all this stuff going on. So there's a, a lot of new people reaching out to way showers um, very similar to previous waves we've had only it just seems like it's quite overwhelming so there's oh i would i would love to answer that but i am so aligned with honoring myself and my journey because i have chosen that's the higher thing if i don't create anything this year 
there's no events, if there's no new classes, whatever. And I'll because I know the highest thing, my highest choice is embodiment, is mm-hmm. to demonstrate, to show uh, others what is possible with ascension, with this frequency, and really go into it and go, I know that the realms are getting torn apart right now. I know that the dismantling of the old is, it's kind of on autopilot right now, so you don't have to focus on it at all. All you need to do is amplify, you know, the lower structures can't handle light, right? So you just, and you can feel like your light body and everything changing. So a lot of times it's just that moment of checking in and going, what exactly is going on with me? in my creation right right now because that zero point connection that you described which is just flawless you know it's just consistent source zero point it's so consistent really you know aligning all those toroidal fields you know here we are in the the center of the center of the center in this beautiful adept state in order to handle uh and receive what's going on here and getting reconnected ourselves to these organic star, stargate systems that opened up in December and January, you just check in in that now moment. What's the revelation? What's the freedom? What's the resurrection that's happening within me right now as an example of what's happening on a higher level? And then simple. I'm not, and I, you have to make that choice. I'm not going to answer everybody today. Not today. Not, you know, maybe not even this week. And some, you know, some people are still not, not experiencing that. And I honor that. And I honor that people want to deal with the external in the way that they deal with the external. It is what it is. But it's also, it also has, has nothing to do with my personal choices moment to moment. And sometimes it's the simplest of things. You know, I'll go outside and I'll have an open eye meditation where I just connect with the trees or the flowers or the birds or, or just Gaia in general and just be, just mm-hmm. be with that. And it's, it's, uh, and that's extraordinary because that's, that's the work. That's the work right now. You know, it's just, okay, this is it. I'm just going to let this expand through me. And there's, there's a lot of master level patience with everything that's happening too, because a lot of people are, stimulated or they don't know what to do with their frustration mm-hmm. or when that anxiety or the collective oh my gosh how long is this going to last kind of thing um starts you know you can you can feel it it's like this weird background energy kind of running in the realities however there's it's quantum they're all happening at the same time resurrection ascension everything happening at the same time as this other thing this other dismantling going on so as long as you keep your focus on anchoring the higher thing, the faster this goes away, you know, by, by quantum effect. So, yeah. And, and that's just amazing awareness to bring to all of us because we are going through, many of us are experiencing again, the different levels of different emotions coming in and we've become accustomed to feeling those emotions at the first couple of layers, if you will, of superficiality. And there's a depth that, again, is being extrapolated through all these ascensionary energies and to focus, again, on the highest. It's like what's in my highest right now and to keep calling that forward. Um, It's key. It's 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 so powerful. Um, And it also takes me into the distractions of other energies that would be shiny enough to take our emotions in a certain direction and how do you suggest that people call themselves back from that feeding frenzy that seems to be ignited in different places i did this post last this article last week i was like you know everyone needs to kind of check in on how they're dealing with this because for some people they just go for the hamster wheel the just kind of like quick you know, serotonin hit of, mm-hmm. of I'm yeah. just going to, you know, a little bit more of the same, a little bit more of the same, a little bit more of the same. Let me just see what's going on. Let me check that one more time. You know, it is just kind of like, honey, if you just step back and realize that you are wasting your, your day or your hour, or however long uh, you're spending watching that stuff crumble. Fascinating. Yeah. But oh my gosh, set a timer. 
give yourself five minutes and then do the other 24 hours, um, you know, on, on what's happening with you and your universe, because the whole thing about uh, ascension and the higher timelines and everything was about the thing that happens next, the thing that happens next. And it's simultaneous for, for many decades. And then all of a sudden you see the, this great awakening happening and then all that dismantling will be gone and uh, you don't want to start, you know, at base level, like, oh, and now how do I ascend? You know, it's keep, you know, keep your focus up there on what's happening with, with you and your own personal journey and try not to get too entangled with the narratives. And that was, that was one of my points about writing up um, these questions, which we could probably roll right into Let's roll into it because they're fantastic and they're, again, they're just so wonderful to bring us back into self-awareness, into yeah, that self-sustaining, yeah. Right, right. Because I asked, what's the highest thing? You know, there's so much, so many things happening at once and I'm very involved in what's happening behind the scenes and the brotherhoods and sisterhoods of light and everything. And, and people are like, tell, tell me what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. I'm like, wait a second. Hmm. That's not what yes that's happening and yes there are many of us who are involved with that however the the, the bigger thing is um is is how you're how you're dealing with this in in the now moment and checking in on again what comes next is you fully embracing your creator state of beingness your ability to create realities again without interference oh. so uh so i i put together this this list of questions um and i just want to address a, a couple of them so everyone just just take a breath and feel into your heart and just answer these in uh they're, they're all written up on my on my website but there's um there, there's something to journaling and meditating with these. And of course, light grounding your answers into this reality. So when you kind of address these after the show uh, on your own and just kind of mentally go through them or take notes right now, um, you also want to light ground your answers into this reality so you can take a look at them and kind of ground best case scenario, highest trajectory for your own uh, ascension path. So very first and foremost, what has been my response to lockdown and social distancing? And then how do I feel about my response? And everyone goes through different levels of, of different phases through this. So your initial reaction is gonna be different from yesterday, different from today, different from tomorrow. So it's good to just kind of check in. How am I reacting to this? Am I behaving like a master? Am I keeping on, on track? Have I just been, you know, just just completely disconnected? Because that can be um, another thing that happens with people. Too much information. Oh my gosh, there's, you know, this reality, that reality, all these different narratives pre presenting, and they just kind of check out and shut down. You know, it's just kind of like, I'm not going to focus on anything, and they just kind of step back. So just feel it. And there's no right or wrong answer. This is you and your truth kind of checking in on your truth right now. So what fears, anxieties, or challenges arose? You know, we're kind of midway through this thing. So let's, let's take a look. How am I dealing with them? You know, initially, a lot of people just zoning out or attempting to numb out or uh, going into light warrior mode because they're so excited about what's happening right now. I don't blame you. But, um, and a lot of people just going into the battles with friends and family and social media and everything like that, all over the board, right? Just check, on, check in on you. How, are you. how are you dealing with this? What are your, what are your tools? Or are you just uh, on the attack, trying to defend, trying to shake people awake? stepping away altogether, totally focused on the light and disconnecting from the lower reality altogether. Again, your personal journey. What emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual tools are helping me through this? And that is something that I myself had to 
reevaluate. Like, what's the highest thing? How does my body feel? What can I do? I can't, you know, obviously the gyms are closed, but I found like, I can't get up and just run the way that I used to. Me too. It's I, all shifted for me. Yeah. I, shit. I was just like, oh my yeah. gosh. You know, I, I know like we're not on camera a lot, but you know, I care about my health and my fitness and my glow and everything. And I was like, you know what? This is just, it's not going to happen. Like I will actually injure myself if I go out and try to do what I used to do. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to shift more yoga, more Pilates, really focusing on um, an awareness that comes with uh, the way that I do yoga and not just going through a routine, but stopping, pausing, opening up the meridian. You know, sometimes it flows into dance sometimes. Mm. Sometimes it flows into toning or light language. And I just, uh, everything's just kind of like turns into this beautiful kind of ceremony when, uh, when I exercise in uh, normal times that I would exercise. And I find myself doing um, very different patterns throughout the day. So everything is just, again, dismantling complete free form. But the spiritual tools of meditation has been deeper and more consistent than ever. Um, visualization too, a little reminder, a lot of uh, very creative writing uh, coming through and, and new and different creations, but nothing that would be manifested in the physical. It's kind of like there's like private writing for me because I've been a very public um, writer, you know, writing articles every single week for 20 years. And I was like, there's some things I'm, I just want to explore for me and I'm not sharing with friends or anything. It just makes me feel good, you know? And that's, that's the thing. It's just like, all right, I need to keep my vibration up here. So what are, and the emotional tools as well, you know, when the, if agitation presents or frustration or, or um, your friends or your family are, are, you know, they're having very different reactions to what's going on now. It's like, okay, where's my emotional clearing toolbox right now because you know a two-hour conversation with the folks is like oh my gosh you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. challenging you know you're just like stop leave it alone leave it alone so then afterward you know what are the emotional tools what do i need you just a lot of walks and earthing and things like that and little creative things um here's a key one what personal narratives are challenged or what personal narratives are believed, or what personal narratives are amplified or broken apart. And then take a look at, and by personal narratives, I mean your stories about what was true, what isn't true, what's true about ascension, what isn't true for you about what you're feeling. Um, and, and the stories are, are running amok right now in the lower realms. So take a look. Are they my own stories? Am I allowing the external to influence how I feel or what I believe as, these, as a lot of things come to light? Uh, are they collective narratives from outside sources? Because I'll tell you, one of the things that's getting broken apart is the ability for collective narratives to be influenced in such a global way. And we're seeing a very prime example of that right now. Like, how did this happen? <laughs> you know? So everyone's getting a look at, uh, oh my gosh, look at what just happened. This is a huge lesson for, for, for everyone on the planet. But also, you know, how, how much of the collective narrative is influencing your personal journey? Because this is about sovereignty and about resurrection of the divine true human, all that embodiment. So how do you feel? Again, checking in on how you feel about the collective narratives that are playing out and your personal narrative, you know, because they, they do, you know, you can't disconnect completely from the collective if you're going to live in a body on a planet, right? So you take a look and you go, mm, that's, there, there are plenty of realities that involve very high vibrational anchoring of new earth and the new earth trajectory. So if you want to align with that, then it's just like, wow, you know, sometimes when people have uh, a lot of time to, to think and contemplate, and that's certainly happening on a global level, you start making 
higher choices or you start rearranging your priorities. It's kind of like, you know what? I just haven't done enough. I've done too much. I'm exhausted. I, I, I wanted a different life, a different house, a different, you know, some people sit in their space <laughs> alone for, for a while and they're like, why do I live here? Why am I doing this? I want, I want to change, you know? And, and it's kind of like the, the manifestation of the collective wish. I wish I didn't have to go to work. You know, it's just, you're seeing the physicalization of, everyone's etheric stuff right now. And it's, um, and it's beautiful because it allows us to make higher choices, different choices, fine tune what's going on. Here's another good one. We are in a magnetic shift, right? There's a, a, a literal polarity um, shift happening right now that's changing the polarity of our fields that has to do with going light body, going to the, the next level. It's changing the fields of our DNA and it's changing duality itself. So the things that you're seeing right now that look heightened is just because they're, they're getting dismantled. So take a look. You know, if we want to amplify the new thing, the trinitized beingness, am I engaging with choosing sides or allowing the collective good guy versus bad guy narratives to penetrate my personal collective? my personal creations, relationships, or service to the ascension. Just take a look at that. There's no right or wrong answer. It's not dualistic. It's just take a look. Am I allowing those narratives? Because trust me, <laughs> they're all going to crumble. So there's a, there's a lot of sleight of hand going on uh, okay. right now. And there are, there are things that are going to be revealed that people, your jaw will drop. Huh. So it's t- taking a look like, Am I attaching to collective realities? What is the thing that I want to create that's in the highest interests of all concerned? You know, and just, again, just taking a look, realizing that the the things that are happening in your body, the reason why you're flat uh, a lot of the time are experiencing this extremely high quality light that's been coming in, especially in the last couple of weeks. We're in a gateway right now as we speak. Uh, It's a amplification that we've never felt before and it's changing the magnetics of Gaia it's changing the magnetics of our bodies so that this dualistic electromagnetic function literally is getting shut down so a lot of times your body is just going I don't understand what's happening so it's kind of like almost a safety mechanism to get you just to lay down and allow the body to completely recalibrate, completely recalibrate, completely recalibrate, because it's going very quickly right now. Okay, am I, am I changing? This year is about heightened change. Am I changing? Are the things that I, I want to change are, are going to really come up for, again, everything becoming amplified. Your own consciousness, your own thoughts, deeds, actions, emotions, feelings, are getting amplified. Everything gets amplified. Good, bad, everything, right? In order for us all to take a collective look at everything that's been created so that revelation um, unfolds. So in this now moment, am I changing? Where is there resistance? Am I creating? Or am I looping with anxiety, behavior that may not be complementary, um, things that feel like uh, a salve rather than a solution. Um, any repetitive behavior, like really, do you really need to do that again today? <laughs> kind of thing. And I was just like, all right, uh, in, in order to feel safe, because a lot of people, when they feel extremely unsafe, and this is a collective too, and you can assist people with this too, like, hey, maybe we need to mix it up a little bit because this kind of looping thing, you, you're just, you know, you're you're attempting to shield yourself from change. So any unhealthy or uncomplimentary behavior that needs to shift because we're going into a highly unknown territory. It's a consciousness shifting, dimensional shifting energy that is coming onto the planet right now. And uh, it's, it's something that if we can just take a moment and check in and not just a mental exercise, but really kind of dig into the emotional feeling state part of it and go, I, I just, you know, maybe you haven't allowed yourself to 
feel it or you're crying for no reason, but you really won't take a look at the layers underneath that. John, you brought that up earlier um, that, yeah, it's an opportunity for all of us to go deeper because on the surface, you look at the lessons and how do I feel? And then there's the, the repair work and everything. This is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. Complete transmutation of the old self. And we've all felt, you know, John and I had this conversation a couple of years ago about loss of identity. Um, and you can go back and revisit, um, you know, some of the wonderful shows that, that John has had on that. But it's, uh, it's really taking a look. What has been my response to this situation? You know, am I, am I numbing out or am I moving forward? Well, Sandra, and something I want to share in that also, which, is, which came as a surprise to me. Um, surprise, but not a surprise. But as I, as I got deeper into the emotions of, of, again, this great unknown that's really happening. And from the beginning of the year, it's, I can typically foresee what the theme is going to be. I think I got nothing. It's like, you're not supposed to know. And I was actually sitting in it today. And what came up was this fear, but this tremendous fear of not knowing what's to happen. It's almost, mm. it can be, if we equate it to things of the past, it's abysmal or nightmarish because it's like stepping into this big black void. And so part of the, my subconscious came up consciously and I felt that fear in my body of okay. how unsafe it can be, how I might need to rely on others, how others might need to rely on me, how I can't trust that all these things like started to flood in. Um, but it took a while and, and a bit of really choosing to be with myself and go asking the questions beyond just the one emotion that came up that felt uncomfortable or felt like a release even. And said, so, mm, but what else is under here? What else am I, do I want to give voice to? What else has a wisdom that it wants to, and what needs attention from me right now? And just almost insisting very compassionately, and what else? And what else? And what else? And that came through. It was so strong. Yeah, I love that. Because that unknown place is, it is such a gift. You know, looking into that void um, is, uh, is very powerful because that brings back our, our core faith, mm -hmm. you know, our yes. core faith. That's got to be the, the key to, um, to all, um, especially way showing during this time because the, the, the people uh, around us are experiencing the unknown. They have, I mean, I've, I've definitely launched myself into the unknown many times uh, in, in this journey in order, and I was always told this is training, this is training, this is training. So you can be more resilient later and not be afraid of, um, you know, lo lose the house, lose the money, all these things like over and over again. I was actually thinking about uh, writing up the, the many times um, that I've been told, let go of everything, give it all away all of that and going into that going, oh my gosh, I don't know what's on the other side of this. Like really? And that trust in myself, the right to be here, <laughs> the right to be in a body and go through this and my faith in source itself, not just my team or the brotherhood or anything like that. Yes, I trust them. But when we get into areas like this, you know, it's, it, it's not about they told me this, therefore you do it. There's, there's like a, a level of trust that's been established there, but the trust within myself, mm -hmm. the trust of source itself and the faith that this is the thing. And, the, and that's the thing, like in the, in the beginning of any ascension process, you make a choice, right? I'm going to choose that a, ascension in this lifetime is the thing. This is the incarnation, I'm going to do it, right? And you end up giving everything away and just, you know, d just destroying all, all of the old and getting into the new. However, this level of it kind of um, shows how, w what that faith was standing on, first of all, is it a real heart thing? Because if it's not a real heart thing, 
everything will crumble. Your ascension path will crumble if it's not built on unconditional love for yourself, for everything, honoring source and all of its creations, no matter what it looks like, right? Yeah. And that's the thing that I have been continually reinforcing and, and visiting when things get too strange, a little, I mean, just, just bizarre, just like, again, you know, in entire days or, or I had, I had a whole week of, of just very few hours in the day where, where I could even move, let alone mm -hmm. concentrate on creating something new. And, you know, a lot of people are like, where's your, this, you should be, you should, I'm like, there are yeah. no should. at this point, it's not a should, it's a could. <laughs> right. Could I do it <laughs> today? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And, and that's that's just where I am. And I would just be yeah. very honest. But it, but again, coming back to um, for for me, it's that time in the evening, spending um, so much time in uh, meditation and prayer and gratitude, and really just going deeper and deeper, deeper into opening up as a pure conduit of source. That's the thing. That's my choice. At this point in my journey, I don't care mm. or carry if it's the wrong choice yeah. to just be that foolish in love with God. <laughs> I'm just like, whatever. That's the biggest thing that I have found. That's the truest thing that I have found. And that's been the foundation of everything is the, the quest to, to feel the reconnection with source and everything that I'm going through and everything that I'm, I'm receiving for, hey, all the focus this year is going to be on this creator state of consciousness, which, oh my gosh, is a book I wrote in 2004, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's all like, you know, everything's coming together. And I'm like, that's beautiful. How, how is anything going to be created in this state of consciousness? You got to let, let that go. Yeah. Let it go. And it's much easier right now because everyone's in the same boat, big collective boat right now, kind of like what's going to happen. And then there's, there's a lot of assumptions about what's going to happen, or we were told it was going to happen this way. Therefore, uh, it, it has to unfold that way. So much is being completely dismantled, including a lot of our Hey, way showers, ascension folks, a lot of our collective thought forms. Yeah. Off the higher timeline is getting dismantled as well. Yeah. Well, Sandra, this morning also, as I was in this process, and then I was actually driving and I had time to settle into another energy. And then I got into an anger and the sadness. It's, I felt this wave coming through me and an anxiousness of to do and these other things. And none of it was overwhelming, but it felt overwhelming to my body. Is unreasonably overwhelming. It's like, okay. And then I was in this space and I got into first anger and then almost immediately a sadness that I've been playing the game, that I've somehow sold out, that I've created my life based on the structures of the system that I'm talking about dismantling in the process mm -hmm. and how I'm letting all that go and how I, I just can't do it anymore. And it's... I'm with you on the ascensionary and, and the surrendering and being with source and that love, but there's still those, yeah. there was parts of me that were holding on to a lifestyle and a persona and a way of being and an identity um, that I was still latched onto that emotionally I'm giving myself the space to say, hold on a second, this doesn't really work for me anymore. This isn't in my integrity. This isn't in my sovereignty. And the morning of that, that I felt this morning, feels like a huge, huge transition that's waiting to birth another um, version of being that's, that's, again, that's just coming alive in me. Yeah, and that's something that, that I myself too uh, have been taking a look at because especially just in the last couple of years, brother, it's been like, how much longer do we do this, you know, kind of sensation. And that for me 
is um, because there is the, the repetition of um, uh, the, the new wave of students and the new, because I'm, I'm a teacher, I teach online. So I'm just like, oh, here's that new wave of students and they're starting that conversation from square one. And there's, there's that level of teaching. And thank goodness, a lot of my stuff is, is um, you know, pre-recorded, you know, the online classes. I'm like, thank goodness, because people are coming in at that level. And I, I'm kind of like, wow, if I have that beginner ascension conversation one more time, I'll, I'll, my mind will break. Right. Mm, it's, yeah. it's just because I'm experiencing so many other things that I need to integrate, you know, and that's the thing for me that um, that put that I feel that I feel that brother It's just kind of like, oh, my gosh, like I, I go to my website. And I'm like, Who is Sandra Walter? You know, kind of thing. And I know we had that conversation a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. So we've been watching the identify uh, the identi identity go away. There's still but but I have to kind of immediately recognize that not everyone is is in the same place that those um that, that that some people still still need that you know they're just like who are you and what do you do and what can you do for me kind of thing I'm like okay but i also understand like i received the message last year at some point this year full stop a complete stop. They kept saying over and over again, the higher levels were like, you're going to come to a full stop, a full stop. And I kept feeling it. And even you know, planning events and everything at the beginning of the year, we were talking about this earlier and you're just like, this doesn't feel like it's going to uh -huh. happen, yeah. but, but like everything. Okay. All right. Just keep answering the emails. Just keep writing the articles. Just keep sharing what's, what's going on and everything. It serves, it serves, it serves, it serves. And then there's this other thing going, if I do that one more time, or yeah. I, I, will, I will lose it, you know, kind of thing. And that's the thing that because the body, literally, DNA levels, different strands of DNA turning <laughs> on that, that no longer um, can, can handle the, the resonation, the frequency of doing the same thing over and over again, even if it doesn't exactly match who you are now. That is, that's the thing that's causing the, the discord. And yes, we can deal with it emotionally going, oh my gosh, you know, you have the, the breakdown and the clearing and the, I don't even know what I'm going to be next because when you take a look at it, it's just like a light body, amazing, you know, just like, okay, there's that. How does that translate into uh, these, these lower realms when you're, um, when you're attempting to be a way shower? And that's something that we've been talking about for a long time. So definitely there's tools there, but the anxiety that it creates in the body is quite real. And I, I you know, always take a moment, examine the feeling. How am I really feeling right now? Well, I'm really a, a bit um, feeling a bit off because I, I don't want to answer a hundred emails today. I just don't want to do it. Uh -huh but I'm a kind person and I'm a way shower and people deserve my attention and people deserve my presence. And I can send a lot more energy through this many words than I can with this many words. So let's just, you know, for the next hour, just sit down, boom, 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 you know, and do it and everything and go body vehicle. You're just going to have to sit and do this right now. We're still showing up for people in that way. And then, you know, and then it's two hours in the garden or whatever, yeah. you know, just like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Because I do understand that it is different levels of consciousness that we're integrating. So of course it's going to feel just like in the beginning of awakening, your old self felt so distant, so out of sync with the, with the truth that was coming in. And it was so uh, uncomfortable. And then you spend all this time aligning with your higher self and your higher purpose. And you're this beautiful way shower and you create all these things and it's beautiful and it's beautiful. And then all of a sudden, you know, source says, I'm going to come to a full stop this year in order to reset everything. And you're like, Oh my gosh. You know, so we feel that in our fields. We feel that it's, uh, it's coming. You're just like, Oh, there's that point on this timeline, this highest trajectory, 
when it just goes, when, when the field has to collapse in order to reset, happening globally too. So it is what it is, no weird predictions involved in that. I'm just, I'm just sharing that that's, that's there. It's, it's mm. there, it's riding in our fields right now. A couple of things that's exciting about the bold unknown. And, and first of all, for any of y'all who don't know what to do for yourselves, just something really quick to get it going and to just be in gratitude. Do this for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As your mantra for five minutes. And that will just amplify your light. But Sandra, in this unknown also, what a beautiful canvas to think big, to like really bring in yeah. the, what would seem so grand. And not from a projection, but from an emotional, that feeling tone that we're dropping into presence with. Exactly. And that's been, you know, our little new earth now ex experiments or, or the unity meditations that we're doing every Sunday, you start to realize like, wow, this spiritual practice just, I mean, we were told it's going to build a spiritual power. It's going to build a, a field uh, with, with all of you so that it's a little easier to get into unity consciousness because unity consciousness scares a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They're like, do I have to open my door? Do I have to open my heart? When push comes to shove, what am I going to do? You're getting a taste of how you behave in the unknown, in that, in the higher, you know, with the higher light coming in. You know, we're getting a taste. How do you behave? Do you hide? Do you integrate? Do you create? Do you honor what, what you're feeling? The gratitude is the highest tool next to faith itself Mm -hmm. um that that you can you can do i am so like uh, i again you know you spend hours in, in open-eyed gratitude for just sitting here for anything that's beautiful anything that's a higher vibration i had purple irises in the back that were going crazy over the last couple of weeks and i was like this is all i want to do in this now moment mm -hmm. is sit here and and blend with these flowers and the energy that's coming through them and their, and their purpose, you know, be, being there for me right now. And I would do that. And it's just gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it just opens your fields. And then of course the higher light takes over. And that's, you know, this is a scary thing for some people like letting the higher self that's embodiment, letting the higher self take over the journey and steer the journey. We've had a lot of practice. This year is the thing, right? We're getting a taste of like, you, you let creator steer, take your hands off the wheel. You know, yeah. you're like, well, okay. How about this? This. That's so perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody is just still got a pinky on the wheel. You know, you're like, gosh. <laughs> You know, and that's that's the the place again. The full stop of the old reality, for the higher reality to just go open. Boom. That was my meditation yesterday, also, Sandra. It's it's as I was asking Source about this energy, this this combobulated feelings that were coming up through me. It's I, Source spoke right back. It's like, where have you lost faith? Yeah. Come back to me. Yeah. Come back to me come back to me for a second and tell me if you still feel those feelings that are of discontent. Ugh. And I couldn't, I couldn't. Every time I tapped into time. what I knew was true, that love, that benevolence, mm -hmm. the, the other energy couldn't run. It couldn't sustain in that field. Right. Because ultimately there is nothing right. but love. There is nothing but source, unconditional. Everything else is just what we've created you know, distortions and illusions and all of that. It doesn't mean they don't have weight or purpose. It just means that when we, we get back on our true north and point it toward unconditional love and, and reconnection to source, not as an out, uh, this is very palpable, not yeah. as an outside beingness, but as what, what we truly are, what, what the spark creator source within is so strong and it's just, it doesn't feel like divine mother. It doesn't feel like divine father. It doesn't feel like paradise sons of God. It feels like all of this simultaneously. And that's oh. the thing I'm like, thank you. Because that really started stepping up for me last year. And I would just weep 
and weep and weep at the return of the Christ that was happening within my heart. And, and now, thank goodness, um, I have that experience anchored because it does, it doesn't, it's, it's not that it discounts the other realities or the other creations. It's not like that at all. It really kind of honors all of the other creations and all the other judgments that humanity puts around what's good and bad and everything. It is what it is because it's being, you know, all that's being kind of clean slated uh, by this, this anchoring of divine light. And it's, let's just tap into like this last intention is this last question. What have I learned so far in 2020? This is the year of 2020, right? Clarity, vision, and 2020 hindsight as well. Kind of like, oh, let me see everything that I've created so far. What's an alignment? You know, I don't really know where this is going, but you know what feels right and what feels like, eh, that's going to get the ax, you know, kind of thing. Um, what have I learned so far in 2020? And what would I love to experience with the upcoming collective embodiment activations that are getting amplified right now? Because embodiment, higher self is in a completely different state of consciousness. That's the unknown thing that a lot of people feel like, I don't really comprehend um, what it's like to be in that state always, forever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away and that other thing's going to take over. And it's me. And it's God. You know, uh, we just haven't known ourselves in that state. So for, for, for me, I, I do spend a, a lot of time, not just, not just with the organic stargates, because that's just part of, that's just part of the, the other work. Um, that I do is there's a brand new organic stargate system and all these energy flows are coming in and they're just, that's why the dismantling is happening right now because that all this stuff opened up. So if you're working with that, yeah, there's, there's a lot of missions and service work and, and things like that, that still present again. It's not one thing or the other. It's everything it's layered on top of each other simultaneously. Um, but when I feel into the, the, the things that I know in the core of my beingness, the experience of that light beingness that is my higher self, that pure love that is the Christed state or, or source itself and the trust and the faith that I feel when I connect with, with source just shining right through my heart, that is, that is my reality. You know, that, that is the reality I have chosen, and that's the reality that I continue to amplify. Mm. So when I feel into where, where is this going, I'm not curious about it, and I'm not going to um, create something that may or may not be in the highest interest of all concerned. I'm just opening up and going, just, just show me, just show me more and more and more of this higher thing because I know the more that I can embody in the collective thing that's happening right now, it's just going to take all the lower timelines and lower agendas and everything. And it's just obviously tearing them apart, you know, and that's while, while it's interesting, you know, the, the things that are coming to light and things that we've been talking about for decades, we're like, yeah, this is happening. That's happening. It's new for some people, you know, and there's, there's collective, uh, releases too with the embodiers you feel like the lower timelines dropping off um with the freedom codes that started coming in last july you start to feel when people are being freed uh that's all i'm going to say about that um you you'll feel it you know you're going to weep you're going to cry and cry and cry not over what happened but that this is the point on the timeline when all that stops. <laughs> I felt that strongly on 4-4. So strong on that day. It was palatable. Yeah. And a couple for, for, for me, um, just because I'm involved with some of that stuff, um, at, you know, beginning of March, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, just, you know, yeah. especially when it comes to kids, I was just like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the... The purpose of all this freedom stuff was, you know, 
most distorted stuff goes first. So it is what it is. Um, but the uh, just the reminder n not to make your internal or your day-to-day -day reality dependent on external events. You know, but take a look. Is there any waiting game? Like when they tell me this then or when this happens then, you know, taking that out of, um, again, being very sovereign about your creation. Um, because so, so much of this revelation was, um, is, is bringing to light how much of it is, all of it is permission based and, you know, people creating realities and then by a collective, yes, you know, it, it happens. Um, so a, a lot of our, our focus coming up this year is really, um, the, the revelation of our skills as creators our ability to uh, to to manifest um, through unity consciousness itself. I feel the training we've been doing with like the weekly um, Sunday unity meditations has been um, has been the perfect training for us moving into uh, learning how to not just telepathically connect but also feel things and heal things collectively, you know, all of a sudden we get synchronized. So it's give, given us a taste of that. Um, it's funny, a lot of people have been uh, approaching me lately about like, how come all the leaders of different unity meditations don't all get together at once for one big Shazam kind of unity meditation. And, and uh, you know, I'll just share so many people have tried, you know, and, and we, we do our best. Uh, however, it's, it's getting so quantum, just participate, yeah. you know, part, participate um, with whatever collective meditation you, you resonate with. Just make sure your focus, again, stays on the love, yeah. stays on the light. That's so wonderful. It's again so much just practical, but very um, integrative questions that you're asking there, Sandra. And again, what it emanates, and again, it's, it prompts this deep wisdom and this connection into that benevolence that it's, again, it's the, it's the foundation for that sovereignty uh, that then takes us into that un the, the collaboration in that unity consciousness. It's powerful. Sandra, I want to ask you about, again, we talk about embodiment. And for since January, I've been hearing slow and steady wins the race, slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> and about this, right, it's like, okay, thank you. And I've been seeing turtles on the island and getting the messages from the turtle also. <laughs> I was like, okay. It's like, I'm going to slow down, I'm gonna pay attention, listen to that wisdom, be present. Presence was a big thing for me as well. Mm -hmm. And then not too long ago, I, I was taken back to the awareness. And we all have, we all know this but somehow we tend to forget, and this is a big piece of the compassion part for me that's so important, the self-compassion, that as we're going through these shifts, that there's body chemistry that's shifting as well. And we carry chemistry in our body that's used to running a certain way and that that's being programmed. We're reprogramming the neural pathways. And by hitting specific emotions and by being in it, it's going to release the peptides. They're going to allow for the creation of a new neural pathway to create a new way of responding, of being to that. And that's not a simultaneous response. It can happen quickly, depending on how deeply you go into your work and are conscious of the facilitation that it takes to shift the chemistry and to get into the serotonin that creates the new pathways. Um, but it's slow and steady and having compassion with that and knowing that our physical bodies are adjusting tremendously also and they're fi and it's fighting. Our neurochemistry is fighting to maintain a certain way of being because that's what we've created chemically, mm -hmm. physically through our bodies. Yeah. I feel that's why we really have to pay attention moment to moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of us have just you know, stood in the grocery store staring going, I have no idea what my body needs right now. Yeah. 
You know, yeah. or just like, I don't want any of this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or I want all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the body, the body does, you know, it's like adjusting, 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 which is, which is, is beautiful. And it is, I'm in my mastery commanding that the new chemicals and the new neurons and the new hormones and the new um, structures and substances that my body needs to fully support this reactivation of my divine DNA and the higher state of light body that I'm moving into be released with as much ease and grace as possible. And then I just monitor it. You know, a lot of us, I know, like in some of my foundational classes, I'm like, you're, it's eventually you're just going to live on light, but don't try to do that, you know, without, um, again, you know, it's step by step by step, the body will change chemically, the hormones change, everything changes because the chakra system changes, like at the old system migrates, uh, I always call it migrating to the new reality, right? Mm -hmm. You're migrating to the new reality. It's not a woo, jump, you know, because yeah. then you, you blow apart, you know, you blow apart the body. And we've seen people in the past too, you know, to 30 years ago, people were like, you know, just giving themselves too many activations and everything. And they either went a little cray cray because again, chemistry didn't keep up with right. how you needed to process this new light or they, they would just blow their body out with too much light. Uh -huh. So we've learned. And now, of course, we have many substances available to assist us. You know, I've been taking more silica and more minerals and things like that. And of course, we know how to, um, so amazing what's happening with Revelation right now, because the application of light <laughs> as a healing technology, you know, is now starting to be, become a thing that people are poking around with because of what's going on with current circumstances. But again, the, the physicalization of light into water and then using that, that water to, to heal and keep up, um, again, commanding it, learning how to decree and command, okay, body vehicle, knowing that the body is a separate consciousness going through a transformation as my higher consciousness is steering the boat Right, so it's like little by little, and if the body gets too stimulated, I'm one of those people who feels like they're getting mildly electrocuted a lot of the time because it is an electromagnetic thing that happens. Um, and, and the Christ light in the past has been you know, cosmic Christ was, Christ was like this blue lightning uh coming in, and it, it does feel like that, it can feel like that a lot of the time. But I, I know how to parent my body vehicle. I know what it needs. I know when to tell it to slow down. Easy does it. You know, and this is, uh, like you said, you know, the turtle thing is beautiful. I remember a couple of years ago, I was in Maui, swimming out in the ocean, went snorkeling, you know, and I like to go way out. Went way out, hit this beautiful warm patch and came nose to nose with a, this giant sea turtle. And she's just there with her, her legs flopping down, right? And she's just hanging out you know, on the wave and everything. And I kind of parked myself next to her, just kind of looking over. I'm like, oh, how you doing? I don't touch her or anything. Just let her have her space, you know? And we just hung out there. And I was like, this is it. This is the thing. Just hanging out on the wave, hanging out on the wave, just peaceful, graceful, no worries, no concerns. Just let it be. And remind myself a lot of the times i consciously pull that moment into my consciousness and i'm like i'm just gonna hang out on this wave with mama sea turtle right now this is this is what i need you know this is the thing to integrate uh because the the thing is if you and especially you know embodiment feels like especially right now feels like a bit of a marathon and i was told like 20 years ago hey when you reach toward the end of the marathon there's going to be a lot of distractions mm -hmm. keep your focus don't take the gatorade don't look at the flags. Don't stop for the picture. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's keep good going. advice. And it's just like, just keep pace. Just keep pace. You know, you don't want to trip. You don't want to get distracted. You don't want to, you know, it's just like you and your thing. If you keep your, again, your compass focused on the divine love, divine light, 
divine will. Yeah. That's the thing. And allow, a, and I have been talking to my body a lot. I always have, but speaking to it as the, the vehicle for this consciousness going, okay, honey, we're going to do our best this day. How can I support you? Yeah. You know, what can we do again? Maybe I'm not running the three miles right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, how about a walk around the block? Yeah, you know, because it's like a pet. I'll go for a walk. Okay, you know. It's funny because I've gotten into points also where it's like I want to go running, and it's I can feel that I'm forcing myself to do it. And I pause and I go, wait, what's the cost if I do this, and what's the benefit if I don't? And just by even dropping into that consciousness, it's like, oh, that's I'm going to be depleted afterwards. I'm, this is going to happen. My body's going to require more rest and. What's the benefit if I don't go? Well, you're going to be restored and you can go for a walk instead for a run and do half a mile instead of two miles and breathe in and be present. And so the wisdom drops in very quickly. We only pause and ask the relationship question that we would want somebody to ask to us if they were asking that of us and how we really truly feel if we were to show up for ourselves. Right. And that highest marriage within you know, just treating your, yourself, you know, you're the queen, you're the king. This is, you know, how would you treat the most precious, the most precious life? Yeah. How, how would you treat that? That's where, that's where you have to go right now because mm. it is, um, and that doesn't mean hiding. It doesn't, it doesn't mean hiding. It does, you know, we do have to get out and, and, and express ourselves too, because that's definitely part of the equation I know sunlight and water have been like the, the key things for me because I, I do a lot of Stargate work, which of course is out on, on the land and connecting with Gaia in that way. But the codes coming through the sun and our, perhaps this is something we should talk about. A lot of us have been having this experience since December of the, the solar flashing activity, which has uh -huh. been going on and it's being integrated full body rewrite you feel like oh my goddess this is the moment like you will feel like you're leaving mm -hmm. and it lasts for 10 minutes half an hour yeah. i don't think you can handle it for more than an hour but all of a sudden you're like no, oh. it's not me <laughs> you'll feel it you know the gas you're just like oh my gosh this is it and it happens when you're out in direct sunlight you know you're completely relaxed and all of a sudden you connect with the sun and you can feel it like because we're an, we're actually anchoring that that event for the collective but you're feeling it because again certain amount of dna has to be able to handle that frequency that's the thing and you'll you'll feel if you feel like a completely different state of consciousness is coming in and your whole body is disappearing mm -hmm. you know which is probably why we were forewarned by so many sacred texts and everything like you know people used to envision it like oh you're gonna up and float away or something like that because it feels like you're leaving it yeah. does and then again slowly uh, expanding the balloon and then you come back come back come back expanding the field and the experience anchoring the experience because there's a part of our dna that is collective collective divine golden race dna is not john's dna my dna sarah's dna it's collective there's a collective as aspect to that. So we can feel it trickling in through the gates oh. right now, that experience. And when you have it, or if you want to command it again, lay in the sun, get completely relaxed, connect with the sun through the heart center, call it in and, and, and see what happens. Because again, your DNA, higher self's only going to give you what you're ready for. Yeah. So if you're if you're ready for it, it's um you can feel it. it re rewrites you completely, and then you know the next the next day you're like, I can't believe that happened. I'm still here, you know, kind of thing. It's it's quite incredible. But we're actually anchoring, again, physicalization of what's already occurred in the higher realms. I love it. I'm so in love with this process, John. So <laughs> is, that why, is that why so many of us have been feeling like those strong feelings of dizziness, like we're going to pass out sometimes also yes. just standing, all that? It's all part really? of that. Thank you for saying that. Yes, because, the mag again, the magnetic field is being so altered right now 
as these new gate gateways align, Gaia is not just emanating a new frequency. She's a, she actually has to completely change. Again, people talk about a pole shift. It's a polarity shift, but it's mm -hmm. all these different multiple nodes of ma magnetic fields are, are flipping right now. I was just present for one in Mono Lake. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but it, uh, it does. It, it changes your feel. You'll feel it. Like all of a sudden you'll, you'll feel a, a wave come through or, if, or it's like rocky standing on the sea sensation or you get vertigo. It's been happening consistently through the tribe for um, since, gosh, years ago, I know. Mm -hmm. But for it to happen so consistently now yeah. when we're in the middle, again, we're in the middle of a magnetic shift. So it's going from a polarized up and down, positive, negative, to a, tr a triangulation, a trinitized state of beingness. So your whole field is going to change. You know, that's, that's the thing. But again, the collective DNA activation gives us those collective symptoms. People are feeling it. Yeah. So, you know, again, part of this unknown thing. And every time that, that happens, of course, there's uh, witness yourself. Witness your own reaction. Because I can't tell you don't be afraid of it. Because for some people, that's their experience. But realize you're creating your reaction. And your reaction is dependent upon where you are in your journey. There's no judgment. Like, Welcome oh, to I'm the sure. roller coaster. And your reaction is going to be depending on the turn, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly, brother. Sandra, I have to ask you. It's, I get, it's, and I have to speak from all my personal experience lately because it's what's coming up and it, it winds up being so true for me and, and so guided. Um, I had been isolating intentionally by myself, just called to it really since January and not feeling really social and wanting to be in my energy and noticing this give take type of dynamic and as an empath where I was over giving or any possible way where I was overreaching for other people's energy. And so it's been great to go with that. And I'm sure many of y'all have been experiencing that push pull over giving over compensating uh, dynamic and that's been covered in other calls but I finally got out truly it's like I was going for short walks and runs but I dropped in over this last weekend and really got out onto the earth onto Gaia and went swimming and dropped in and guidance was no take this hike that you've never taken before um, and I was in it it's Gaia was speaking to me it's like connect with me again I'm ready to connect with you again because we're in another phase we're amplifying something else. So I'm asking you to connect with me. This is Gaia. Mm -hmm. We're doing something. We're amplifying together. And it's good for you. It's good for me. And it's good for the collective. What's yeah. your awareness about that frequency? I had an experience the day before December solstice where I was, where I was connecting with Gaia and literally hands on the ground just really digging into her core and feeling her and and she's she's been really clear for the last couple of years just just really uh, kind of honoring her way showers let's say you know and especially folks that are out on the land you know gatekeepers grid workers we work with her a lot but there was something different and i was just like yeah, yeah just show me just show me and this overwhelming wave came up and she, she just like blasted this vision of, I'm going to reveal this year, my higher self, just as you are. And it was just like, I'm going to reveal, I'm going to reveal. And the, that, that moment just deepened my, I was just weeping. And I've had several moments like that, where I oh, connect. I can feel that. Like, I'm just like, oh, Gaia. Oh, Gaia, because it, again, the, the freedom thing, to free an entire planetary consciousness from all that she has been through and all that we have created here, to partner with her in this journey has been just, it's just such an honor, but also to feel this really um, a, a deepening, not, not a reconnection, but a deepening of the, the new earth level that pure crystalline level. And when she shared a couple of years ago, like 
every creation is very different here in these new earth realms. You know, nothing sticks. There's no distortion. Things are created, uncreated with the same ease and grace. There's so much flow. Feel it, sister. Feel it. She's like, just feel it, feel it. And when I felt into that and uh, paired with what I felt last December and the whole revelation, I mean, I, I was just weeping. That's before all this stuff went down. And I was just weeping like, oh my gosh, this is exactly the culmination of all the work we've been doing here but there are there there is a vibration of the deepening of the relationship with her and yeah. what we shall create with her as she reveals her crystalline more solar star-like self because the trajectory for her is to become a more star-like beingness so when you feel that happening within yourself knowing that uh this return of the Christ and the golden race and all of that stuff is on track for the higher and higher creations. You start feeling the higher and higher creation partnership that is not like this overblown ta-da thing. It's like such a deep, um, he completely healed, completely still zero point love, beautiful beauty, 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 beauty. Um, it's, I'm just, I, I, I'm just kind of honored. I'm just so honored to be walking that path with her. I'm really feeling like we're side by side. You know, there's always been a partnership, but she, she it feels like she's kind of escorting uh, many of us into that experience of like, walk with me, walk with me through this revelation. And there feels like there's a deepening of that. Yes, I will walk with you through this, this revelation time. And keeping, again, keeping our focus there because the other stuff is, is what it is. So it's, again, it's all happening simultaneously. It's quite beautiful. It's very beautiful. The second you said partner with Gaia, it's like I will that. It's like something like I got emotional in that. And then the awareness that Gaia, y'all, Feel this, and Gaia is asking you to partner with her mm -hmm. in a different the, way, in a new way. There's yeah. reverence and the, the sacred space. Um, it's, and she's asking you. So anywhere you've asked yourself, "Who am I?" Gaia is asking you. Yeah. Gaia is asking you. Feel into that. And feel how Gaia feels and sees you and invites you in as an equal. And that's the and, place to receive that too. This yeah. outside with her. This is the, and I understand a lot of people are, are still sheltering and stuff, but there's, if there's a way for you to get outside um, or just connect with it, a tree, a plant, a flower, anything, um, but the, the more, again, the craving for, for more of that is there. And from a gateway perspective, brand new organic flows have opened up, energies that have never been here. It's, it's a profound. They're profoundly new energies, which is why a lot of people just getting knocked out by them mm -hmm. you know, or, or feeling the, the shifts or, or feeling the unknown so strongly because our future self is attempting to embody and it's a completely different state of consciousness on the other side of the veil, on the other side of the shift oh. <laughs> that we're, we're starting to anchor and feel. You know, it's a, a very palpable sensation of the time collapse. You're starting to feel the ascended Gaia and the, the, again, the partnership with her of like, hmm, okay. Look at what we have created. God, magnificent. Magnificent what's coming up. Sandra, it's, ah, I feel so heart content right now in this conversation and what's been shared today. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so very welcome, John. It's always, always wonderful to check in and thank you for, for showing up, even though uh, many of us just feel like, hmm, <laughs> you know, like, okay, we're still doing this kind of thing. I know that it assists people, you know, that's, that's 
that's always been our highest intention, brother. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what can I provide in this now that honors everyone's journey and my own? Mm. Absolutely. So beautiful. Again, thank you. Namaste to your sister. Namaste to you and everyone. Bless and to you. everyone on the call. Namaste to you. you ah, y'all are amazing. Thank you for sharing your hearts and for being on here and for being the light that you are to help to amplify ours. So again, y'all are beautiful. Thank y'all. Have a fantastic evening. And again, keep shining.